What's up everybody? Welcome to Midweek Inspirations. We have just featured a Cornerstone Music Philippines original, fired up by your burning love. There are times that we may get off to a slow start and struggle to create any momentum that would help us get to the finish line. You may experience something like this when you wake up in the morning and you do not feel as if you had a good night's sleep. So you are weak and lethargic the whole day. Sometimes it can be about a certain project you need to work on. Before you can even start, you get a lot of distractions left and right. When you are able to finally work on it, you realize you have lost the most part of the day to be productive at all. We sometimes feel like that when it comes to worship. We desire to praise Him and lift Him up. But there are a lot of things that hinder us from coming into His presence. David said this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. We may never understand David's current situation when he wrote down those words, but his message is clear. Sometimes we need to fire ourselves up. Feeling good is not a prerequisite for worship. Worship is what we offer God because He deserves it. And I have learned that there are times that we need to press on in order to break through the barrier of our feelings and emotions and worship God for who He truly is. The second song is a cover on a worship piece by Planet Shakers. This is called, Here's My Life. Surrender is one of the first things we are encouraged to do as believers in Jesus. If you still remember the first time you heard the preaching of the good news, one of the things you were asked to do was to surrender everything to God. In that moment of being broken before the Lord, you also experienced wholeness and restoration. But that was just the beginning. Your whole life should be marked by surrender. You become a living sacrifice. And by the grace of God, you are alive and the life you now live you live only for Him. Surrendering to God is one of the most empowering things a believer can experience. Though the word seems like you are being stripped of all that belongs to you, but you will quickly realize that you also have everything to gain. When God becomes your all in all, nothing on earth will ever come close to comparing. Last week, we talked about Jesus using parables to teach people the truths of the kingdom. And we learned that only those who would respond in faith were given the privilege to understand the deeper meaning of his stories. In Matthew 13, Jesus shares another parable, and this time it's about the wheat and tares. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. And so the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. In the same chapter, Jesus gives the explanation for the wheat and tares. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. and The reapers are angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. 
the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Even with Jesus' explanation, we are still left with a question as to who the wheat and tares are. Let's get a few things straight first. It is clear that the field is the world, basically referring to the world we, we live in. We who are believers are the sons of the kingdom, and we are the good seed sown by Jesus, the Son of Man. The tares are sown by the devil. How are tares described? Let's carefully look at some words for clarification. In verse 41, we see all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. Verse 42 describes their bitter end. But verse 43 brings it all home. The righteous will shine forth as the sun. This means that the tares would be the opposite of righteous, which is unrighteous or sinful. In the beginning, God does not allow the reapers to remove the tares because the wheat will also be affected. Here is an example. If a flash flood comes to a community where the population is half righteous and half unrighteous, there is no guarantee that all the righteous will be saved and all the unrighteous will suffer. Now that may be a very simplistic explanation, but I hope it gets the point across. What God wants to happen is for His plan to take its course and that it comes to a point where there will be a marked difference between the righteous and unrighteous. In 1 Peter 2.12, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. I can understand why people easily make the mistake when applying this parable in the context of church. If we deem a brother or sister to be unrighteous, and for whatever reason, we are quick to categorize him or her as sown by the devil, and we silently believe that God would punish this person when the proper time comes. Close, but not entirely accurate. It can also work the other way around. To them, you are the tares and they are the wheat. So what can we do? Allow God to search your heart, and may you find it clean and focused on loving Him and loving others. Though you may be accused of doing wrong, your good deeds and the pureness of heart bring glory to God the Father. Thank you for joining me this week. If this has been a blessing to you, please share it with someone. Don't just drop it on your friends list. Write a short note that God reminded you of them as you were watching this and pray that they'll be impacted by this video in the same way that you were. Remember, Jesus loves you and stay safe.